I'm Sarah Morehouse, and I'm one of the librarians at Empire State College. This podcast will explain Creative Commons licenses in the context of creating and using Open Educational Resources, or OER. Under current United States copyright law, works stay copyrighted until 70 years after the death of the author. During that time, no one can use those works without getting a license from the copyright owner. Even with exceptions for fair use, this can be a barrier to people reusing the content in constructive ways. The Creative Commons is an organization that has created a set of what are called open licenses, which are used worldwide by educational, research, cultural, government, and business institutions. Ordinary licenses are granted to users on a case-by-case -case basis and require the user to pay royalties. For example, eBrary grants a college the right to access their eBooks, or AWOL Nation grants BMW the right to use their song in a car commercial. Creative Commons licenses are different because they are granted preemptively and require no royalties. Copyright owners can put one of the Creative Commons licenses on their content, and that grants the public the right to use it for free under certain conditions. Creative Commons licenses have been upheld in the U.S. Supreme Court. They also comply with copyright law in more than 50 other countries. You can tell that a work is in the Creative Commons because it will have a logo. The logo links to a plain English explanation of the license, which says what you can and can't do with the work. There are several different Creative Commons licenses. Each one grants the user the right to copy the work under certain conditions. The conditions vary with the different licenses, so you need to check which one you're dealing with. It may be that you can do almost anything with the content, or your use may be restricted to just making copies. Up to four separate provisions can be combined to create any Creative Commons license. The simplest Creative Commons license is the Attribution license. Its only requirement is crediting the author. As long as you give credit to the author, you can make copies, share those copies, make derivative works, and share the derivative works. All of the other Creative Commons licenses require attribution, and they add other requirements on top of that. The second kind of kind of Creative Commons license is attribution no derivative works. If a work has this kind of license, you can copy it and share the copies, but you can't create any derivative works. You may be wondering what a derivative work is. A derivative work is anything adapted from or based on the original. Spin-offs, sequels, supplementary materials, remixes, and mashups count as derivative works. So do translations, updates, and adaptations into a new format. The third kind of Creative Commons license is attribution non-commercial. Under the attribution non-commercial license, you can copy the work, share the copies, and make derivative works, but only if you're not making any money off it. You can't sell it or use it for any commercial or for-profit purpose. You should be aware that just because a college is a non-profit institution doesn't mean that everything done in or related to the college counts as non-commercial. For example, marketing a non-profit college is still a commercial activity. The fourth kind of Creative Commons license is Attribution Share Alike. Under Attribution Share Alike, you can copy the work, share the copies, and make derivative works, as long as you put your new work under the same kind of license. The point of this license is to spread and grow the Creative Commons. Also, if you want people to be able to use your work in small-scale commercial ways, but prevent exploitation by big for-profits, the Attribution Share Alike license encourages that. Next, we get into Creative Commons licenses that combine three of the provisions. An attribution, non-commercial, share-alike license requires that you cite the original creator of the work, not make any money from using the work, and put any of your own derivative works under the same license. An attribution, non-commercial, no derivative works license requires that you cite the original creator of the work, not make any money from using the work, and only use the work as is. You can't adapt it in any way. Finally, some people use the Creative Commons to grant their work to the public domain. They don't want to put any restrictions on use, not even requiring attribution. We would like to discourage your using the grant to the public domain for one big reason. It's not clear whether it will hold up in court under U.S. copyright law, and it definitely doesn't in many other countries. 
Requiring attribution is not burdensome to the user and actually helps people to assess the credibility of the resource and find more like it. If you really don't want your name associated with the work, you can just put your name down as anonymous. So that, that covers all the different variations on Creative Commons licenses. What if you want to put a Creative Commons license on your own work? You'll need to do this whenever you want to make a course or a learning object open, as in an open educational resource. You might also want to make any articles or you write or presentations you create open by putting them out there under a Creative Commons license. First, you need to establish whether it's legal for you to do it. There are several factors involved here. If your, if your work contains excerpts or elements from copyrighted works, you may need to get specific permission from the copyright owner. Obviously, you don't have to if the work you're using is in the public domain. You may also be able to use it if it's clearly a fair use. That is a complicated issue that we'll have to address in another resource. But if it is not public domain or fair use, and you are using someone else's work in your work, then you will need to get permission. If the work you're using has a Creative Commons license that allows what you're doing, that obviously counts as permission. But otherwise, you need to contact the copyright owner and negotiate a license. This, this may be true even if you are using something that you wrote or created. If, for instance, you have built an online course and embedded an article that you published in a journal, you need to check with the journal to find out if you can make the course open with your article in it. They may require you to pay royalties for your own work. This is one reason why it's increasingly important to publish only with journals that allow you to retain your own copyright. Similarly, if you've already published your work, you will need to check with the publisher or the journal to make sure that they will allow you to make it open. Finally, if your work is a work for hire, you'll need to check with your employer to see if they're all right with it being in the Creative Commons. If you work for the State University of New York and you have a letter of agreement regarding the content that you created, that letter of agreement will specify who owns the copyright and under what terms. If there is no letter of agreement, then you own the copyright by default. If you work for another institution, then you should consult your own institution's policies. The reason you have to check all these things is that when you put your work into the Creative Commons, people can make copies and derivative works and share them with others. If your work contains work that belongs to someone else, then you would be infringing on their copyright by allowing people to copy the other person's work embedded in your work. So that concludes this explanation of the Creative Commons. I'd like to leave you with a question. Do you think it's possible for someone to make money from a work that is in the Creative Commons? If so, how and why? If not, why not? After you've come up with your answer, go to http colon slash slash wiki.creativecommons.org slash frequently asked questions and see if you